Hi, this is Stacy Peralta with another Bones Brigade video show introduction. We premiered Bones Brigade Video 4, Public Domain, in 1988, and that video is one of my very favorite skate videos, as it's where I was cut loose as both a cameraman and an editor. We shot Public Domain on 3 quarter inch video, Super 8 film and 16 millimeter film, and we created a number of very unusual camera rigs for shooting vertical, follow cameras for shooting street, and aerial cameras, and anything we could do to get the camera moving with the skater. We had a real load of fun doing this one. Rolling down streets Paved with desire Broken dreams Line shattered landscapes Public domain Reoccurring Refrain Belongs to no one
as you witness the extraordinary exploits of the incredible Rubber Boys, Steve Size, Eric Sanderson, Ray Barbie, and Chet Thomas. Debutantes, petite 
sophistication, indelible elegance. Yeah, my whole life was basically geared around skateboarding. Me and my partner Joe Meyer had one of the first indoor skateboard parks. It's got the mini chin ramp that Lance built, and it's got the expo ramp from the expo contest and some street stuff and some smaller half pipes, but all indoors in Vancouver, and it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I opened about a year and a half now. I definitely think that there's a place for girl skaters. I think that um, we, it's not because we're females that we can't skate, um, we're just skate differently. Skating is the, the funnest thing I've ever done. I want to skate till I'm old and gray and my bones break and they won't heal anymore so I can't skate. Yeah. I encourage girls to skate, sure. Anybody who wants to skate can skate. Hey, you wanna buy a, uh, what is this thing? Chinese, eh? Oh, we went there. Hey, I need this one. One of those, hey, give me one of those. I might not have much dinero, but I know where to go. I hop up on my porch gate and take off like a bat. Straight out of hell for the home of the burritos that are big and fat. Hey, take me back to La Cumbre. I want another steak burrito. A nice size called Corona and a side order of carnitas. Take me back to La Cumbre. I want another steak burrito. A nice size called Corona and a side order of carnitas. When I knew she was the one for me I went home and I dreamt of her As she got down on her knees She held a bugle in her left hand And a mess of blood in the right A bullet belt slapped across her chest And you know it's like well that night Hey, take me back to the Cumbre I want another steak burrito A nice size Coca-Cola And a side order of carnitas Take me back to the Cumbre I want another steak burrito A nice size Coca-Cola And a side order of carnitas I grew up in Los Angeles And I ate lots of Mexican food once a while tasted funky, but most of the time tasted good. My life changed almost overnight as I got off of the bus. At 16th then Valencia, where I found the taqueria for us. You would not know for looking, this place will be the one. With my first bite, it was over for sight until my burrito was done. I sat back and I wondered whether I could eat some more. Then I looked up the menu and thought about what I could score. I ordered up a taco with a little rice and beans. One or two quesadillas and a chili belly that was me. A couple more coronas to help it all go down. By the time I finished, I was passed out on the ground. Hey. Get more for both in here.
was pretty flabbergasted, I think that's the word. Because <laughs> uh, somebody had told him that, yeah, you know, Mike's doing 540s, you know, and he's like, oh, yeah. Uh, I've been skating about 11 and a half years now. I don't think that skate parks, you know, are, are will be the future, you know, but it's a way of showing people, that, hey, they can build ramps in their yard, they can find, you know, places to build ramps. It's a good place for the kids to be, and they don't have to be in the street anymore. My life is skateboarding, yeah, I guess it, it pretty much is. I mean, I, I wake up and uh, have breakfast and uh, go to the skate park and skate. I like skating in my own park because I can do what I want, you know. Uh, I tell the guys, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, and uh, you know, nobody snakes me because they don't want to get kicked out. <laughs> There's just so many possibilities with the mini ramps. You can just uh, work them every which way.
there's nothing that's so creative that I can just go out on my own, like in the barn or something, or any place, and just let go. Like now I study and stuff, and you get so intense. People think it's all good that I make great, my grades are good and all that, and in skate and all that at the same time, but it's not true. I mean, you can't do one without the other. If I drop skating, I don't think I do as well as school. Why's that? It just taught me concentration, and it lets my, you know, you get so tense and so lopsided in your mind. And when? When you just study, sit there in front of, in a chair. I started 10 years ago, I guess. Wait, 11? Okay, my skiing, I, it seems I have a gift for it. I don't know, I feel sort of funny about, because now we get paid and all that. clandestine observation. We see a roving band of skateboard cultists. Practicing obscure urban rituals amidst the cultural deterritus of an abandoned manufacturing facility. How is it that these cultists can derive pleasure from the seemingly insignificant, the debris of modern society? What is the strange, profound attraction that this rectangular piece of concrete holds for them? Do we now observe the rites of passage of a newly emerging civilization? America's civic engineers, confronted by a pristine natural environment, have designed their cities their centers of commerce for that most efficient of all applications, non usage. These young urbanites have discovered uncharted activities within the sterile surroundings of the environment's original design. Has not this trend continued into the residential neighborhood? Why, even into the local schoolyard, where even the simplest activity has been pre-planned, tested, surveyed, and accordingly constructed for singular purposes. Preordained usage. Yet our cultists have created their own usage, their own interpretation. Well, my son Casey Elliott really likes to skate, so living out in the country here. I thought we'd just put this ramp in, give them a chance to learn how to skate. I think that uh, it's a great sport. I mean, a lot of parents should really, even maybe before they move and buy a house, check with the neighbors next door, see how big their backyard is, they could put a mini ramp in. I feel kind of that's what being parents is, is doing things for your kids like this.
top sport. It, got, it has coordination. It's a great sport. Boy, 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 boy. You guys realize this is a high alley zone? Did you know that? No, sir. Do you know what you were doing out there? It's weak. Weak! Weak! I'm gonna have to write your citation. Another code 97A. Weak alleys. Da. Slavuje alleys. Javitsle miroi problemoi. Da. What motivated me more than anything else to go in this direction with my skating is my love for gliding. Gliding and turning, I think, are the heart and soul of skateboarding. You could take almost everything else away, aerials, board flips, ollies, even ramps, and you'd still have something that you could call skateboarding. But if you took away gliding and turning, you'd take away the very essence of the sport. So it was the magic of effortless gliding that originally drew me to skateboarding and that made me fall in love with it. It's lighter than air. Ultra resilient. <laughs> Lighter than a two-ton rat. Ow!
<laughs> Champion. Council. Advance. Never. Forget. Oh, so you want to go skating?
never function. I've been skating for about, let's say, 11 years. When I first started skating, we built this little tiny quarter pipe. Me and my friends down the block built it. And uh, we used to skate that every day. Until the parks opened up. And that was called Winchester Skate Park that opened up. Uh, I started skating about, I'm not sure, about 1975. ramps the size or the style of a skate park. I'm around about the time we did the animal chin video, or a little bit before, we're figuring that ramps had to be uh, changed, you know, they had to be wider and they had to have more obstacle type things. Okay, go. I built a skateboard park for Kevin Harris and keep on going. I figured that we should probably try to do something that is more like a skate park, because that's, that's where the kids learned, I thought, because they skated small things and they worked their way up. And so I tried it at Kevin Harris's skate park. We built small ramps and they lead all the way up to vertical. Seems like a lot of kids these days are gonna get better faster. Yeah. <clears throat> Just cause uh, they'll learn stuff on the street and then they'll learn stuff on the mini ramp.
my drive is just uh, progression. It's just to be able to keep going on and doing new things. Uh, scary, traveling, fun times, uh, occasional spontaneity. I'm just an electronics person. technical stuff. Skaters right now remind me a lot of aviators used to be. You knew you were in an elite group. Learn how to fakey, learn how to kick turn both ways, front side and back side. And then learn how to hit the lip, rock and rolls, grinds. I like to go fast.
hum like you never thought you could hum before. Yeah, bear those rat bones, you fly. You fly like a bird with one wing. <laughs> Where you land, honey? Where you land, sugar? You ain't never been there before. You do a fast play. We'd be the sons of Sidewell. You're gonna hear those curbs that gonna speak to you, child. You listen, they're gonna speak to you. Cause they are curbs. They're your curbs too, baby. I got four wheels under my feet. Now I'm gonna move all over your head. It's just 